so I'm asking, I'm sounding okay to you then on this mic, yeah. You're, you're sounding great, and you know, oh, you know what I'm like. We're already recording the podcast. I know, this, I know. This is it. The people are going to get free <laughs> Zoom information from you, the maestro. Oh, that I don't is know Keith about that. Ethan. Me, me being paranoid about my microphone. <laughs> it's not a good look for my podcaster. That's all good. Well, you should be. You're paranoid about all your your kit getting it right, getting the levels yeah, right. Well, maybe paranoid's not the word. I remember when, obviously, I. I I've developed some skills myself, and we, yeah, um, yeah. I, I try to um, edit and do what I can myself. But when you would edit the shows all those years ago now, I'd be thinking, oh, that was a good one, or the quality is good. And you'd be like, it's not there yet, Nashi. Not there. Uh, I'll, I'll make it better. I'll make it better. High well, standards. You can, you can get, well, you see, you can get, you can get lost in it. And I, curiously, I saw a really good tweet the other day from a guy who was being quite, uh, quite critical of people that over, over edit you know, mm. take out all the breaths and all the pauses and silence can be very, very powerful. Someone being slow and taking a breath and being considered in their thoughts is, is you know, that's part of their personality, that's part of their character mm. that can really emphasize the point they're trying to make. So it's important to actually leave that natural space in an edit and make it sound authentic, you know. What I get now from sort of doing my own shows and whether I take it off Zoom or the Tams Cam or however I edit, um, I, I never, and I can say this honestly to you, and I mean this, and I mean this as politely as but I never appreciated how much work you have to do behind the scenes. I never appreciate, I didn't, Keith, and I never appreciated when you would turn things around next day or same day for me, when when we'd get when we'd get a guest and we'd think, Keith, that that game's tomorrow, or that person's on stage yeah. at the festival tomorrow. Can we get it out? And I'm thinking, I've done my bit. It's over to Keith now. At <laughs> the time it takes to edit. To polish to get it right yeah i mean fair play to me it's it's a skill it's an absolute skill that um that i think us podcasters if when stuff does go to a to a producer or an editor we walk away thinking well i did the hard bit you know i got the questions and i got this what you do in the background it's um it's hugely valuable to where my show is now for what you did all those years and, and how you got me to a certain position with my show to then tell me when covid hit Get your arse home, take your kit home, keep going, keep pushing it. And then at home and at night time and things, develop my own skills through you teaching me. Yeah, but and the thing about podcasting, I was having a chat with someone just yesterday, a potential new client, and I used the phrase I use all the time. It's still very much a DIY thing, yeah. podcasting at heart. You know, po podcasters, people, you know, trying it out and want to do it and developing and honing their skills and you know that 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 i think is really really important and some people might find that a little bit bizarre for me to say as someone that you know runs a podcast you and provides editing but i think it is actually important for for the authenticity of the podcast if people kind of know a bit about what goes on and like for yourself now I, I work i work for corporate clients who you know they, they want the full editing service and the producer mm -hmm. thing and that's fine but there's other podcasts that benefit I go back to the authenticity word from from people having that little bit of knowledge and um, you know understanding like what happens and you know investing in some microphones and some kit. I mean, I remember right at the start of the pandemic uh, when you were moving, you would just put the studio into the office. Yeah. And then it was like, well, you've got the kit. I said, well, get the kit home, and I, you couldn't find a cable. And I remember driving up to Brunsfield and throwing a cable out a car window because we were yeah. keeping our distance. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's what we did, but I suppose that comes back to the can-do attitude and like what what you did. But that, that that I think that's really really good that you, you know, you did that. We, we got the kit just in time, I suppose, so that when you were took it home, because at the start of the pandemic, well, when it really kicked in and people were working from home, you couldn't get a USB microphone for love nor money, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And so people were doing stuff, and you know, audio quality for some people maybe wasn't great, but you were on a really good starting point. And it's something we think back to those early pandemic days and the lockdown, and we we racked up a heck of a lot of shows, sort of night, but nighttime stuff, oh. pretty quick. And even remember we'd be up at midnight, sort of oh. tuning into folk in, in the states, getting the time zones. You and me, it was um, it was a, a proper proper little team, remote team, just building this show. Absolutely, just, it's funny when you said to me, oh, "Do you want to just have a catch up tonight?" There's a say speaking to a potential new client yesterday and I referenced you and what we did and to show people what can happen and how you can approach it and you know people say oh, I want to have a bit of kit so if I meet someone I can just record I said well 
Nashi had that vision that if someone popped into the Ace property office, yeah, oh, let's just sit down and have a chat, you know. But, but I think what the pandemic really, really changed was, you know, people when we started doing podcasts with me, with me, it was about got to get the, got to get the guests to the studio, or we've got to get the guests sitting face to face with me. And then in the pandemic and with Zoom and people getting more comfortable with the technology quite quickly, it was, you know. We have we can talk to anybody anywhere at any time of day, and yeah. it has made it more accessible. And I think change for you changed your mindset and your approach. But that's not to say a lot of people are thinking, you know, I actually really want to get back to be able to actually sit opposite someone, yeah. you know, where possible, and 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 that just can create a whole different type of interview, a different type of conversation, uh, without doubt. I think, I mean, I did one recently, went all the way to Wales myself. We've yeah. got uh, Rob, who works on the videography side, with me. We for like like you and me, he, Rob and I are now sort of built, forming a team. We formed the team, yeah. and he creates the footage. He he records the the video footage. I, I record the audio. He does the mashup, and I again shout out to Rob Walk, Simmer Dim, give him a follow on Instagram. The work he has to do behind the scenes, because I do the I do the hour show or the hour and a half show, and then it's over to him. And for, I know now not to say when's it going to be ready. <laughs> why is it taking so long because i know what he's going through trying to line up audio to visual there was an edit there there was a wee sweary there there was this that and the other and all that sort of stuff my goodness you guys in um audio and video production behind the scenes but it's it's getting back to face to face what i said there was going to wales and interviewing the athlete sean conway because he was announcing yeah, his new yeah, show is yeah. show no he wasn't he was announcing his latest world record attempt which sadly anyone that's listening um, if you're not aware, he had to he had to stop that through injury. Um, but face to face with Sean, we set up in his bothy, his, his office in the back garden, yeah. and an hour and forty five minutes just flew past. I couldn't believe it. After I said, Rob, how long was that? And he says, we're we're over an hour and forty. Sean and I just lost yeah. lost lost yeah. ourselves just having a chat. A couple of guys, you forget about the microphones, you forget about the often the content of the reason you're there. You just start talking about all sorts and you go down rabbit holes and tangents and yeah. i think there's something in that and a lot of podcasters and i've said it before that when you get these opportunities to talk it's it's rare in this day and age that like you and me right now my phone's off abby knows i'm doing a podcast the kids are asleep i'm not going to get interrupted i'm just having a blather uninterrupted yeah. which doesn't happen that much anymore yeah 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 it's in just go back to the video editing thing and the time you know certainly in the last year been asked a lot more by people or can you film it and can we yeah. do it and I, i'm quite firm with, with clients in, in terms of that i say that's not a podcast yeah you see people are doing podcasts on youtube but i look at that so you know you're actually doing a tv show there in the traditional format you're doing and that's a completely different skill set uh, and you want it to be polished and look good and there's people that can do that that's not my thing that's not what i could do i could cobble something together but there's people that do that to, to a high standard but there is this thing where brands are wanting that because they want it to go on instagram and tiktok and youtube and vimeo and the visuals is so so important but it's an interesting time for me as those requests become more regular you know yeah. i'll say to people listen i'll give you the the recorded video from zoom and i say well you know you could maybe use 30 seconds of it as a wee trailer or a teaser that way but it's getting them to think yeah it's an audio product but i'm not i you know i i, I can't push the, that, that's an open door that I'm pushing against because people are just going to continually want to have video content and the technologies, like everything as we see, technology gets smaller, lighter and cheaper, you yeah. know, and the software, you, know, you, you get video in software with your, with your laptop these days, you know, so it goes back to that DIY thing for people and how important it is, but, you know, Spotify and Apple, are, they're all experimenting with this idea of having video footage, you know, and Joe Rogan and what, what people what people want and the demand the demand is absolutely there for video podcasts but some may argue well it's not a podcast it's a video you know i could be yeah. a little bit pedantic there but it's kind of what what is it what is it because the audio thing is you and i both know the podcast very much a companion you is back to that thing of where you you listen to a podcast while you're doing something else you know i've gone on about that for, yeah. for years but not just me that's what people say you know you listen to it when you're in the gym walking the dog Doing the doing the housework, whatever. But if it's a video, you've kind of got to sit down and watch it. Yeah, you could have the video on in the background, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I'll have the news on the telly, and it's on in the background like radio. But yeah, I think well, if you're going to go at the time of putting a, a video together nicely shot, nicely edited, you kind of want folk to 
watch it as opposed to just listen to it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that's something I've added since obviously um, going online, getting the video footage from Zoom. Like this one, this show yeah. that you and I are doing here, I, I'll get the audio. The video will go on YouTube on the Get After it YouTube channel. And then there is the, um, again, speaking to Rob, and it's him, the way he divides up content and things like that. There is a written blog I could create out of this. Yeah. You know, there's transcript scripts, there's clips, there's all sorts. It's amazing what from a, a half an hour podcast, you can actually get a stack of content some good for LinkedIn, some good for Instagram, Twitter, yeah, yeah. the way you divide it up and something yeah. slightly different for each. I'm, I'm very guilty. I think a lot of people are of putting the same thing across every platform. That can come down to time. It can come down to, oh, here I am with this video right now. I'll just post it everywhere. Yeah. Where something, more time, more money behind it can definitely do the edits and take the time to clip something different, clip another highlight and put it in different places, change the format. Um. All, for me, it's still everything. I'm still learning every day. Yeah, but you know? I, I see that goes back to that DIY thing, and that's good. But you're experimenting and, and and making everything relevant. I think the point you made about LinkedIn's interesting because certainly I think we've all seen quite a change in LinkedIn. I've heard people say, "Oh, it's become a bit like Facebook." But I know I consciously, if I post something, and I always tend to do it retrospectively about maybe something I've done that I enjoyed that went really, really well, and I think you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it was a pleasure honour to be involved in that event and I'll certainly post it differently than I would on Facebook or Instagram yeah. or, or Twitter. I mean, I actually find myself doing less on Facebook now. I kind of, From a business perspective, I'll more do, do it on LinkedIn and if I'm doing anything on Facebook, I'll do it through the company pages and then just share it without a comment because mm -hmm. um, I do kind of think a bit of it as a necessary evil because <laughs> it's good. Yeah, there's a lot of good content. Um, I mean, who, who's the guy we, you had on um, and he'd said that he, he's never learned anything of social media. And uh, G. Alderton, the um, and it, fitness professional. And it was really, I, I was fascinated. This, I don't want to sound any way critical because I was fascinated by his points. He'd never learned anything by social media. And he was very definite about that. But he'd already got his daughter, like her Facebook page or a Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that seemed like a bit of a contradiction or is he protecting it so no one else takes it? And it was just this, I know these are, I learned loads from social media. I mean, take it for today, we record, obviously there's the whole Scottish independence referendum or whatever yeah. it's been called. I've learned about that today by journalists that I follow posting links and providing comments. So yeah. I have learned from it, but I suppose it's about who you follow. So yeah. which on Twitter you're getting all, all sorts of opinions. <laughs> absolute you, bun fight. <laughs> you see what you're saying there about... um they get like giving your kids instagram ah, accounts yeah with sean conway the adventurer he said a really interesting thing and, and i look i was like that's bloody brilliant he's he's got two boys and they're just babies but they've already got private instagram pages right. but it's just um mum and dad that upload pictures so when those kids get to 18, 19, 20, they'll be able to look back at their entire life. All right, okay, right, okay. So it's not, yeah. they don't post to public, they don't post anything. It is just, oh, that's a bloody brilliant idea because we're always on those platforms. We're always <laughs> taking photos of our kids. They've got memories. So it's creating an archive. Of creating an archive, yeah. yeah. I yeah. know they could do other ways and you yeah. could do iClouds and that, but they're, I suppose yeah. they're using Instagram storage or, you know. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a, a really interesting idea. No, I think that's good. And I suppose the kids, as they get older, then I mean, it's the whole thing, isn't it? When you're 18 to you're 21st or you're 40, <laughs> somebody's going to drag out some embarrassing photos of you as a yeah. kid. So, <laughs> no, I mean, I think if you're thinking of it as storage in an archive, then yeah, why not? Pretty why good. Not? Now, a lot of we, we've podcasted before, we've chatted many a time, and I know you've got um, other strings to your bow, should we say, but podcasting's where I discovered you and Woosh and everything that you get, you guys do. But what else I saw you this week, or was it last week, you were behind the scenes at the 4th One Awards. What were you doing there and how did that event go? It looked a bit wild. <laughs> yeah, so for listeners who don't know, uh, Radio 4th, uh, obviously 4th One, 4th Two, they, they do an annual awards show. So obviously this, this was dormant for uh, three years. So it's held at the Usher Hall. There's a whole lot of awards, things such as best teacher. So it's covering the, the fourth listener area. So it's Edinburgh Lothians, the F five Falkirk, but in West Lothian, East Lothian. So like best teacher, best visitor attraction, there's the Cash for Kids Award, charity awards, and then they have music awards for best eye 
uh, artist, best musical icon, music recognition awards, and so it's live performances. So it's a, it's in the Usher Hall, and if you've been in the Usher Hall, you know it's it's a seated venue, but it also works uh, for some gigs where they take the seats out in the stalls. So mm -hmm. it's a standing gig. But for this event, what they do is they, they level it out, and from 12 noon till 3 o'clock before the actual show starts, it's a seated dinner for 500 people. Okay. So that, and that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a boozy lunch. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a corporate affair. This, these, these, people, these people are having a good time, you know. They're, they're, doing it, they're, they're, good, they're good about their business, you know. Uh, so, so you have that bit first, and then they open up the, the public and get tickets for the, the Grand Circle and the Upper Circle. And come in for just before three o'clock before the actual award show starts. So, yeah, so I worked on that as the show caller. So, there's a production company called Catalyst to basically put the PA system in the light and all the LED screens, all the, all, all the stage backdrop, and a lot of the infrastructure. So, I, I just do some freelance work for them as the show caller. So, my job is basically to do my the level best to make sure the show runs to time and that all the crew know, right, first up's this act and then the next award is this and then the next award is this. And there's a stage manager that I, I'm in communication with just to make sure it's all just ticking over. And as I say, I'm there so that the talented people can just get on and do what they do so that the lighting guy can do his thing, the sound engineer can do his thing, the stage manager, the video operators know I'm kind of there where they go, well, Keith, just lost the place here. What page are we on? What item are we on? So you're just there to kind of talk people and be that little bit of safety net. So that's the show caller role. So it was it was amazing to be back. You can imagine the buzz. So you've got Boogie yeah. and Arlene from Fourth on Breakfast hosting, and then various of the radio presenters come on to present the awards. So I it was it was it was it was great. But it, it, it was like you could tell folk were like, I'm, I'm on this. This is a kind of it's a big event in the Edinburgh in the Edinburgh cultural diary, you know, for businesses and and the like. Is yeah, Keith, yeah. I, I was thinking, I was racking my brain, obviously, after we spoke today, yeah. and I said, come on, let's catch up tonight, let's have a chat. I was racking my brain, I was like, oh, what are we going to talk about? I've only just thought now, and remembered when you said show caller. Do you know where I'm All going right. with this? Go for, well, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. World, world in a day. <laughs> world in a day, yeah. World in a day, for any of my listeners that... God, we've not done that, we've not chatted about that, have we? <laughs> we've not chatted about that, we've not debriefed World Dodded, in a day. Dodded, the whole... Not, the whole, whole. <laughs> behind the scenes and when you were talking there about um, the way the show runs um <laughs> i remember one friday night was it i was a friday night and and it was just you trying to sort of where's ali mccoist is he <laughs> <laughs> is he on and then um i was coming on next so i was in the back up the back what do you call it the green room sort of thing ah, yeah, wait, we'll waiting, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. waiting to come on and speak to i think mark Bowen and doogie vipon for, I, think, I can't remember what that one was for but um, it was a build-up to World in a Day that I was hosting. Yes. And out of nowhere, I was like, keep Ali McCoyst on. And he was like, Nashi, right. I'm going nowhere, son. <laughs> and just the chat. But for that, you are behind the scenes speaking to me, speaking to Ali McCoyst, Mark Beaumont, Rob Wainwright, everybody that's around the country, around the world, going live on this show that's going out on Facebook, YouTube, wherever it may be, uh, yeah. streaming live. What's that like managing several personalities behind the scenes, making sure online is going smoothly with all the, the bam pots that you're trying to control and uh, get ready, you're on in three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all in preparation. You prepare as best you can because particularly, you know, it's it's one of the chats we've had, you know, with the work we do, like, with, say, like the Fourth Awards or award shows at the ICC Conference Centre, you know, when you're in person, and you're doing a show in the venue. You know, you've got you've got one stage, and you've got one or two microphones, and you've got maybe two or three camera operators in the venue. So that's on two or three of each element. When you're doing a, a live stream with twenty people, that's twenty different internet connections, twenty different cameras, twenty different types of microphone or whatever. So you've just got to put into your mind that something will go wrong, or perceived as going wrong, or it might not be so smooth. But at the end of the day that's actually the bit the audience really likes. Now, you don't want it to happen, but, you know, Ali McCoy's going off on a tangent after two or three whiskeys. <laughs> quite, you know, that's Ali. But then, at the heart of it, you need the solid rock, solid things you like Bruce Aitchison hosting it and you yeah. coming in to host your bit. Um, Davy Jib doing his wine taste, uh, his beer wine tasting and Alex doing his whiskey tasting. If you've got good people on each element that you know are the good moderator or the facilitator, then you go, right, next up, so your bit, Nashi, Mark, you, Mark Bowman, uh, right, that's the thing I'm least worried about because you two will just keep it ticking over and, and deal with what's what's going on. So 
Yeah, you just got to break it up into segments. I mean, Doogie Vipond and Nick Nairn. I was about to say, yeah. when, when the, <laughs> the kitchen was on fire and the dog oh. farted. Oh, it's just but like you're working on you're working on three different camera feeds and we're using iPhones to get some feeds with the software and it works. But people were loving it. Yeah. And the thing is, the great thing about that with, with Doogie and Nick, and obviously they're used to doing stuff with their great food guys with BBC production teams and Landward, but they didn't get you know they didn't get RC. They they they, re, they know what it was. Mm-hmm. So they were in the fun element and knew that it would be a little bit rough around the edges. But their starting point's so good because you know they're not going to get annoyed with you. You know because you kind of say right guys off you go and do your thing. And Diggy's obviously a seasoned pro at host. And then you know so you, so yeah, I I, t- I tend not to think of it as stressful. You just got to embrace what's in front of you. But it is in the planning where you go right. If something goes wrong, I know that Doogie can keep filling. You and Mark can chat about it, and you know, and I mean that's a compliment, you know. So it's like, I it's it's good fun. I mean, listen, I laugh when like I look at my phone and there's like a a, a WhatsApp message for Rob Wainwright, and it was like, oh, oh, we're doing this again, are we? Okay, and obviously it's in, <laughs> the, the cause, the whole purpose with Doddy is absolutely, you know, all for the right reasons. But it's like, right, okay, because the very first year we did it was insane. You know, it was the day yeah. the, it was the day before the Calcutta Cup game, and you know Scotland going to Twickenham. There was this whole buzz around that. That remember that weekend, and then obviously Scotland went and won that weekend. And then Rob came and said, "Oh, we want to do it again." And I was like, "You know, right, I get we want to do it again because we want to do it for Doddy, and we want to do it for M and D, and we want to do it for the charity." But I, I was the thing I was most worried about was it living up to the first because I mean, remember the first one we had Phil Curry on playing live, you know. Yeah. Um, and all uh, Kelly Brown singing, yeah, it, it singing, was... sweet, singing sweet, sweet Caroline before the England football team. <laughs> could have made it. So that I say in the context, that was my worry was it was so good, and it was a one off, and it was lockdown, you know, and we were all we'd kind of we'd sort of come out of lockdown a bit, you know, yeah. and I thought right, I really I hope it lives up to, you know, and I was not having not because I didn't have confidence in the people taking part. It was just the first one was just so unique. And had so many just amazing moments in it. Yeah, it yeah. captured so many people. The first one, definitely. The yeah. second oh. one, this year's one was it was epic. I mean, for oh. for me, the world in a day and the hosting podcast with Sean Fitzpatrick, Kenny Logan, getting all these stories. But things like that world in a day event for me, and hearing the stories from from regular folks mm. that were yeah. cycling, that were oh. doing two hundred and forty miles, that were knocking their pan in that yeah. were sitting there being the inspirations themselves, let alone we had all these famous people that achieved so much through their career coming on to inspire the riders. The inspiration came from the, the people that were cycling. Yeah, and I, you, I think they were great too. Again, and it probably sounds like a bit of a contradiction because now we've done both of them twice. Yeah. My head now actually a little bit thinking, yeah, a third one would be good because obviously I learn a lot. Yeah. You know, I yeah. learn a lot about it and how can we make it, maybe make it better and communicate things and, like improve the graphics and improve how people can get in touch and how people can find out more about what the charity does and how they can donate and a bit of education there. So I think, you know, so with World in a Day, I'd love to try and come up with this thing where we can actually just have a running totalizer of how many miles have been completed on the screen. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, I've, I've now said that on a podcast that I'm not going to have to make it. I so, get the work. Well, they delegate that. But you know what I mean? So there's things I look at where you think, yeah, right, yeah, next year. You know, you always go, no, next year we could be doing this and we could be doing that. and um, But yeah, World on a Day is incredible. It's, um, it's, uh, it's full on. It's the, the organisation of it, but it's, you know everyone's going to turn up. You know, that's, what's, that's what Doddy does. Everyone's going to turn up. When I set that schedule and reach out to these people and say, this is for Doddy, this is for MND, this is what I need from you on the day. It's generally like, I'm there now, actually, let's do it. Thanks, thanks for thinking of me. And I'm thinking, fantastic. We've got Sir Steve Redgrave here, Sir Chris Hoy's coming on. And, and so, you know, it's yeah. it's fantastic personally to get a chance to speak to these people and dive in and, and and interview them with the greater cause. We're here for this reason, and we're here to get their stories out there to keep those cyclists going. What an event! But like, guys like Sir Steve Redgrave and Catherine Granger and obviously Chris Hoy and Andrew Cotton, these guys and McCoy, they've all been interviewed. 
on mm. hundreds of times in loads of different circumstances. How many times have they actually been interviewed on a bike in the middle of a charity event? You know, where it changes the dynamic of the how they land, ask a question or answer a question, and other people. And that's what I think makes it so unique and interesting for them because you know, they say they've been we've sat in many a seminar and done many great interviews with many different people on different topics, but sitting on a bike. Contributing, I'm under a bit of pressure as well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> when I when I tee up Ali McCoyst and Boogie Vipon to talk about nightclubs oh. back in Glasgow, I just right. have to, I, I remember I would just sit back and those two would just be going at it. And those stories that they told, and then Dame Catherine Granger, uh, remember when I was on with Steve Redgrave and I said, Dame, uh, Dame Catherine says, yeah. uh, Hi, Steve, and he wishes she yeah, wishes you all yeah, the best. Yeah. And she's like, I'm still here, Nashi, and I was, I'll just leave you two to it. Yeah. Listen, you get, you've just you reminded me because I, I need to ask you about this. So, Tom Stockman, world's yeah. strongest man, two times, two times. Yeah, did you see him playing in Soccer Aid? I did. Oh, I've seen the highlights. I saw oh, the did. highlights. Oh, I thought it was magnificent because obviously you've had him in the podcast a few times and you've been up to those boys see him with the, the, the with the kids and Avi. Yeah, aye. I mean, I did see him, and he's a diehard Rangers fan. No, he, I, he's no, football yeah. through and through. I mean, that yeah. would have been a lifelong dream to play in a game like that. I would have thought oh. from. And he did really well, didn't he? Saved, saved the penalty. Saved. I made a couple of good saves during that. I mean, I mean, obviously he's a big laddie. You know, you see, <laughs> the size you of could, the goal. You could see like who was up against like the players. <laughs> uh, but no, I watched that. It's 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 a, it's a fascinating event now. But actually, if you look at that, you look at like World in a Day, you're getting people on bikes. Yeah. Also, all celebrities, which is quite, you know, pretty much everyone's ridden a bike in their life, you know, kind uh -huh. of thing. But you know, for them to go into that football environment and you know they do a training camp and they mix it with the pros and it, it, but I just I thought he, I thought he was brilliant in that and he just looked like he was having an absolutely brilliant time as well I, I, uh, those, those guys like Tom and Luke the, the yeah. Stockman brothers I just I can't shout about them enough because just being up and seeing them yeah. and being being around where they come from being in their their natural habitat of their gym and being in Luke's house and recording the podcast and just seeing they're just regular guys that put the work in. Now genetically, obviously, they're they're gifted for the yeah. size of them, but it takes a lot to become the world's strongest man and the European strongest man, and to keep on that path, yeah. and to keep up with the diet and the volume of food and the volume of Pikes, training packs away. Don't it? but it's I, incredible. I, I think there was the first time. That we interviewed, well, I'm saying we, you interviewed them. I, I was certainly on that Zoom call. Yeah. And they were talking about like the merchandise they had and sending the t shirts out. How Luke would just chuck the t shirt in a bag and send it out. Yeah. yeah but Tom was like, oh, I'm sorry, was it Tom that would just chuck yeah, it in? Yeah, Tom. Luke, Luke's, Luke's the kind of management and going, no, no, I've got to fold it properly and it's got to look right and the label's got to go in straight. And I was like, there's that attention to detail. I thought yeah. it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, but they, they, they bounce off each other so well. They, yeah, yeah. they do. But there's a little, and I've probably talked about this in the show before. Um, when I came out of Luke's house, it was Rob and I up there. Rob was on the video. I was doing the podcast interview with Tom and Luke after Tom won it the first time, World's Strongest yeah, Man. Yeah. But I had Abby and the kids up there. Yeah. And we had an amazing afternoon with the boys. And for my kids to meet the World's Strongest Man, we've got yeah. some incredible photos of my wee boys and daughter. They're just, they're, they're kind of up to Tom Stoltman's knees. Yeah. And he's just looking down. This giant is looking down on them. But it was when we came out of the show, and that show was about an hour and 20. And Abby and I think Abby and the kids were nowhere to be seen. Next door to Luke is their dad's house. Right. And I don't think their dad knew we were coming, but he saw that Abby and the kids were just playing. In the... He took my whole family into his house, gave the kids chocolate biscuits, gave Abby a cup of tea, spoke about the boys, just took it. Like it was just the family environment. The dad yeah. said, just come with me, kids. And he had games over there for the kids. He had yeah. little trikes and all sorts of stuff. And it was just, I understand where the boys have got their attitude from. It's just come down the generations. Yeah. Their dad was kind to us. He took my family away. The Tom and Luke, extremely kind. As I say, I can't champion those guys enough. They've got to, an, they've got to a level now, a global fame of, I mean, it's got to be a matter of time before they're on the Joe Rogan podcast. The amount of yeah. times they're over in yeah. America competing. And when they get there, they're going to go through. Um, they're going to go through the roof. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah but there's there's all there's good values at the heart of it, you know. Because yeah. I remember when they came on the world the other day, thinking it was the first year when we did that, and they were brilliant, and nothing's too much trouble, and good, and a good story. But yeah, they're, they're just they're just good humans and communicate well and work hard. And I mean, you, you didn't. I don't follow. You know, 
the world's strongest man at all. But you know that if you're going to do that, you've got to be dedicated. You've got to have yeah. talent, and you know, yeah. it's, it's just you can't just be big and strong. You no. know, there's a lot more to it than that. You know. Do you remember um, when I interviewed them? Um, remember Bruce Buffer, the UFC commentator or um, yeah, ring Mike, announcer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Michael rem- Buffer's brother and manager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember at the end when we were off mic, and you know what it's like when you when you stop recording a podcast? A lot of the best conversation comes when it's yeah, finished. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. everyone relaxes and yeah, yeah, the yeah. real stories come out. Yeah. But he go and he goes, um, Alan, you're from Scotland, aren't you? I was like, Yeah, I'm from Scotland. How's Sean? Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you're on screen at this point. I mean, you've oh, yeah, come back in the conversation, yeah. and I'm going, Sean, Bruce, this is Bruce Buffer. We've just been talking about yeah. Steve McQueen yeah. and. Uh, um, and all the famous Conor McGregor and all the famous UFC fighters in Hollywood and LA and the strip and he's like how's Sean Allen and I was like Bruce had a, and he's like Sean Connery and I was like oh I don't know Sean Connery <laughs> I'm, I'm but, not, but I, I was able to tell him though that because where I am a flat I'm yeah. like just all the road from Fountain Bridge for obviously your global audience that's where uh, Sean Connery very famously was a milkman yeah. over milk and there's a plaque along from probably a 15 minutes walk from my flat to where the mm-hmm. plaque is. So I was able to give him that anecdote. That's all I could give him. Yeah. No, I know, but it was just so funny that he thought I might know Sean Connery. I was like, no, unfortunately it's not. It's a small place. He's it's not been on. Um, think, just thinking about shows, uh, I'll never forget. It's back to Doddy. One of, one of my favourite yeah. shows was, um, oh God, the artist, Gerard. Was it Gerard? Well, this is terrible. Uh, Gerard yeah, Burns. Yeah. Gerard Ger- Burns. But he was, oh, he was, he was incredible. His stories of Doddy Weir in Hong Kong with Billy Connolly and painting the portrait of Doddy and going and seeing him and, and just, whoa, that, that whole backstory and the way he looks at the, the artwork and the way he paints and, and the studio, I got lost in that podcast. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he was incredible. We've had a few well, shows. How many, which, what number are you up to now in your podcast? I lost track. Cause... 219. Wow. Because I remember when we went 100 and that was Andrew Cotter. Andrew Cotter, yeah. And then, and 200. Then he, yeah, and he he was he doing the Mabel and Olive dogs by then? I yeah. Oh no, yeah. it just it just gone it just gone viral. Remember? And ah, yeah. He was he was and he said um, I don't he said Nashi I don't know how your email got through the, but it did. <laughs> it got <laughs> to him and he answered right. and he said I'm happy yeah. to come on, um. But he was telling us that because it was the the Mabel and everything had gone viral through COVID, um. He said he was getting inquiries from like. Was it companies that were trying to promote penguins? Would he do the voiceover in this island yeah, for yeah, that? And yeah. would he do the voiceover for that? And he said, I'm getting I'm getting inquiries from all over the world to speak about animals. I go, and this. Yeah, I must go back and listen to that one because that'll be quite interesting given that timing and what was going on. In the world, uh, yeah. In the world, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly and, right. yeah. Andrew Cotter, I mean, I remember a good bit for him. It was one of the most interesting or the best moments for him. He was in the um, the studio when Andy Murray first commentated on Wimbledon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was really interesting, and that, and in yeah. that environment, and then talking about Tiger Woods and talking about all the. I mean, God, when we think back at some of the people we've spoken to, unbelievable. Um, some great stories. I remember, like when you were getting Sean Fitzpatrick on, you were getting all these rugby legends at the other side of the world, and you were absolutely buzzing for it, and well, it, quite rightly so. It was brilliant. That, that was just Twitter. That was just early yeah. lockdown. I remember. Oh, shout out to Adam Hastings. He was the oh. first. He was the first Zoom. I'm sure I did. Um, I sent him a message. Early lockdown. I was like, mate, you jump on this podcast. He said, like, yeah. Well, I don't care what we're doing. I remember, it was just like a dating show for Adam Hastings, just talking yeah, about right. how do yeah. I get out, what am I doing. <laughs> There, was, there wasn't that much rug we talked about. It was just, yeah, because you had then, Hoggy on as well. Uh, Stuart got, Hogg on. Yeah, yeah got and, Hoggy. And Rory, a Rory Best. But that, that's a, that's fascinating looking back because I'm, I'm, cause I'm actually not in the studio. You know, that's what I was saying. It's that was this microphone work and I grabbed the USB <laughs> microphone because I'm never used to actually doing this. So it's, it's, it's all right. It's this on. Um, and yeah, looking back at all the things we did, you would like do a podcast every every third night. You, you know, like, just uh, seven or eight o'clock. I yeah, like, soon as soon as get, get me going, mate. It was like, oh, this this will do. This is someone else. When about Jamie Murray? Wimbledon G- on Jamie. Jamie Murray was brilliant. Jamie Murray was outstanding. I made I, I made I made him I made him I made Jamie Murray move room. I remember because his internet wasn't very good, and he got up and lifted his laptop and went through and sat on the floor. <laughs> we here. Let's not name any names. Jake Humphrey, high high performance <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but isn't isn't it funny when when I've interviewed people that like their job is uh, on TV 
and they're top of their game, but sometimes their internet connection isn't, or their microphone isn't the best. Hilarious. No, no, no comment. comment. No comment. I could say it. He'll, he'd appreciate that. He's never going to hear this. He's at a different level now. But even getting Jake Humphrey, because um, I told him, I was brutally honest to him. I was like, when you launched your high-performance podcast, it cut me down a bit because I was like, oh, another show. I, it, it, that's developed thick skin with me. There's shows, yeah. there's shows everywhere. There's new nice. shows every week. There's new shows trying to get the guests I'm trying to get, get. There's new presenters getting the guests that I want to get. You just got to keep turning up. Yeah, and I, but what I've noticed since I did a few financial sector podcasts, yeah, and they, they're looking. You know, we've been doing it, and during the during the height of the pandemic, they were great for communicating and not just communicating to the outside world, but communicating internally with their staff. Mm-hmm. And one of the, one of the, the clients I work with have really wanted to shake it up and take a total different approach, and we've actually brought a guy in to help actually produce it, just to bring some fresh ideas and how to people to frame questions and actually do some training with them mm-hmm. like going in and saying you know just think about how you deliver how you how you um say something how you frame a question and getting things down nice and so i think so it's been interesting to look how, how, how they're wanting to keep it fresh yeah. and then it's this idea like yeah as you say that you get the same people on every podcast so it's like my thing you know saying like steve redgrave being interviewed on a bike is a completely different dynamic <laughs> but getting people to think right okay you want to interview that person but what, what, what's your podcast angle going to be you know they've been what, what's it actually going to be what's the purpose going to be what are you going to do that's a little bit different um, and yeah. And one chat I had with someone was actually, I just want to actually do it face to face. I don't want to do it down Zoom because actually getting back to being in the same room and being face to face might actually be a little bit unique, bizarrely. Yeah. Um, and so I'm encouraging people, yeah, just to think a little bit differently. And you know, been, I mean, talked about Mark Bowman earlier. I've been doing some stuff with uh, the entrepreneur department at Dundee University, and mm-hmm. it's about so it's an entrepreneurship podcast. And there's you know, there's hundreds of entrepreneurship podcast. So what's going to make yours different? Yeah. So the guests of what you're putting at the heart of it, what's it going to be about? Um, I'm working with an organisation um, who deal with care homes, but also about adapting people's homes. So when you get old, you don't automatically get you know, put into a care home. Yeah. How can we adapt your house? So they're talking to people who work with robotics and technology and how can you maybe improve and what improvements you can maybe make to your kitchen? So that you know, if you want, if you want to reach up high to a cupboard, no, actually that cupboard will now lower down to you. Yeah. You know, and sensory stuff. So you know, if you get out of bed, the lights automatically come on through motion sensors and all that stuff. I've thought, never thought I'd been doing a podcast on that topic. Mm-hmm. You know, but they're using it to celebrate fifty years in business, and you're going, wow, that's a fascinating topic. And mm-hmm. I mean, doing did stuff with Queen Margaret University for fifty years of their drama and performing arts course. So there were f- six alumni. You know, ranging from people, you know, playwrights, uh, Jordan Young that's in River City and Scott Squad. But it was not just about, right, let's talk about your career, but can you remember back to why you wanted to study drama at Queen Margaret? And what what, what would that what would you say to the 16 or 17 year old that's thinking of studying drama and, and how relevant it is? So it's about so you're framing questions. So, oh, no, oh we're just going to speak to our alumni because they were great. It's like, what's the message? In the mm-hmm. podcast for the person listening, are they going to go? Actually, I was thinking about studying drama, and actually, you know what, Queen Market sounds like the place I want to do it because yeah. the, the the legacy and 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 the track record and the people that have had great opportunities. So it's interesting to see with podcasts and this whole, right? We'll just sit down and have a chat, and that's great. That's still really really relevant. But actually, how can we just, you know, with hundreds and thousands and millions of podcasts, how are we going to make? How are we going to cut through, effectively? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially the, the, the sort of businesses and the um, corporations that you've mentioned there. there. There is a way for them to get a bit deeper into the history of things. Whereas, like you and I, just shooting the shit here. I enjoy this kind of this kind of form of podcast, like a, a Joe Rogan style. That I, I love the way that obviously his studio and it's it's top level, but they can just pull up on the big screen something that went viral that day, and they can yeah, burst out yeah. laughing. They can have it. They can have a beer when he's got his boys around, and they can get drunk on the podcast and have a right laugh. But then other times he is going deep into alien yeah. technology or uh, veganism or anything, you know, diets, fads, whatever, sleep. He can go into any kind of thing and go really deep in it. Whereas yeah. there is the other side that I kind of enjoy listening to. I mean, people just talk nonsense or people that's just it. talking rugby. The other one that's really interesting for me, uh, 
and it's someone who doesn't have kids, but it's Play Scotland charity, and they're doing a series talking about play and different mm -hmm. aspects of play with kids and how important play is. And I was editing one today, but whenever you put this out, hopefully, about, I don't want to give too, too much away, but I think you'll appreciate this because I look at your kids on Instagram and you were, you were trying to decide who was the most aggressive out of sons with <laughs> football. But they were talking today, the interview was about risky play uh -huh. and how important a bit of risk is. And I was fascinated by this. It was, it was like things like, right, so we've got a paddling pool in the garden. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a bit of a risk there. And a kid yeah. riding a bike, well, obviously, they're, they're talking about well, it's important to have that. Yeah. And I look at like, you jumping in the sea every morning and your kids doing it and, and, and all that. There's there's got to be a bit of risk. And I think that's important with podcasts. You're taking a bit of a risk mm -hmm. um, in what you're doing because you, you, and you, also, you don't have BBC guidelines or Sky TV guidelines or, you know, that you, you, your guidelines or whatever you decide get after it's going to be. Um, and you've, I mean, you started out as a property podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and property rugby and it evolved into something that has now changed my life. Yeah, you know, absolutely. changed my life through experiences, through meeting people, through like, my phone book is is my contact list now is is it's huge. Insane. It's insane. Yeah. It's great. It's great. And I wouldn't say every every guest a friend now, but every guest is a contact that will respond, and they'll say, "Well, yeah, how can I help?" Or "Thanks, Nashi," or they keep in touch. But I suppose if you look at world in a day um, and the cycle, you know, is we were all leaning heavily on Na Nashi knows them. Nashi's had them on the podcast. Or so Nashi's had someone on the podcast that'll know them. But you know, your contact book's incredible. Yeah, no, um, it's, and, it's, but you've grafted, you've worked hard at it. Um, um, and you know, other people want to start podcasts, and I'll have a list of people that want to interview you. Mm -hmm. Use the phrase, you, you just go after it and went for it. And yeah. you say, what's the worst thing that can happen? Someone says no. Someone or, says or, no. Or just and that's, that's the thing. And, it, and no this, this isn't this is the truth. I got I got three or four no's from Sir Chris Hoy. That happened. Mm. I think, and I think I've still got the emails and all very polite and not not just now or he's competing here or he's yeah. over there. And it just never happened. And then World in a Day came around and the right contacts and the right introductions. And then I start emailing Sir Chris. And then it comes to like, you know, it comes it comes to be. And we had a great chat. We talked about his kids, he talked about his books, his cycling, his records, his race cars. And I'm just a guy. I'm a fan. Oh. I'm a fan of all the people, you know, that I've had. Yeah. The, I've been fortunate enough to meet, fortunate enough to podcast with, and it's it's been fantastic. What a, what a ride I've been on, Keith. And you're still I'm, going, still going. I, I'm not stopping anytime soon. It's got to be a balance between the, the full day, daytime job, family life. But I think I I kind of I get it wrong sometimes, you know. But and I mean by that, I'm staying up all night editing, and you're knackered in the morning. <laughs> but that, that that's yeah. life. You don't sort yeah. of get ahead by sort of staying in your bed and and, and not getting up and doing it. So, I've I learned that um, pretty early on from a few people. Right, people got behind me and sort of kicked Mars when I needed it. So, we we march on, as they say. But Keith, a lot of it, and I say it every time I see you um, on a podcast, it's, it comes down to you for setting me up for for giving me the confidence to keep going through COVID. So, thank no, you very well, much. You kept kept me going as well as I say because I was kept busy and. Lots of amazing projects that, you know, we talk about, you know, Doddy and, you know, everyone involved in that is doing a great, great job in terms of awareness and raising money. But, you know, we wouldn't have been able to get involved and play a small part in that, you know, and it, it's it's quite humbling when, you know, you get, you've got Rob Wainwright's number on your phone and he's messaging you going and then you've got all these people that you're dealing with and you find out that, you know, they're just really great people. And you yeah. know, so I've, I've had a lot of great opportunities out of what you've been doing as well. And also, as I said, I talk to other clients and they say, oh, who else are you working with or, you know, what story? Because I remember when you started, you weren't even on Instagram. You no. were barely on Twitter. No, <laughs> wasn't doing anything. It's a anything. good example, but you're a good example of in terms of embracing it's the whole package. You, you've got to create the brand. And so, yeah, there's branded podcasts, financial sector ones, and the universities are doing really nice little series. And I, mean, I, I did some stuff with Visit Scotland for COP26 where you can do branded series around a theme. You know, you're 200 odd episodes in. So mm -hmm. I think your next the one is your, your live audience one, which. which yeah, you know, that's. That's your, that's your that's been one. discussed. That, yeah, um, I can say I, I've got a documentary that someone wants me to put on. They want me to yeah. interview them on stage. They're they're looking for a location. I'd love to do that tomorrow night. We're recording this. Yeah. What time is it? Half past ten past ten at night. Um, on Tuesday, tomorrow night I'm hosting a opening party at Ocean Vertical, my pal's adventure right. fund, yeah, 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 interviewing yeah. Molly Hughes, Stevie, the owner, and and the people there. And I love it. It's just sort of 
from the corporate stuff I do with Edinburgh Rugby. You were behind the scenes for all the Edinburgh Rugby podcasts that I hosted. Yeah, that's right. You, know, yeah, you, you were there. You were there. So yeah. we've done a lot. And um, I'm sure we, we will continue to... Uh, the only thing I've not done is come down and had a bacon roll off your fire pit, bizarrely. No, but yeah. And all, all of those, I've, I've, I need to cycle down. I've been saying that, but this 5.30 a.m. Yeah, the dads starts. and dudes. Shout out to the dads and dudes that I've got coming to my garden and training early doors. Um, it's just this little community of dads that yeah. I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to throw out some messages here and see who's doing see who's doing nothing that wants to do something. And there's... Yeah, I need I need to work out the mileage then to Long Nedry on my bike uh-huh. and ho- it has to be I've, I've cycled it to Preston Pans before and you either get the headwind or the t- on the way or the, t- the tailwind on the back and you definitely want the tailwind on your way home you know yeah. so uh, they, they hope for a favourable wind uh, a wind, well, you know, wind from the east you know you're welcome <laughs> anytime I know I need to I need, I need to I just need to get my kick my own backside and, and get down uh, Keith, on the bike. Keith, let's wrap it up. It's uh, yeah, no. fantastic to catch up. Aye, um, thanks. It's, it's a nice way to do to set record. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else has had to listen to this. No, th- listen, thanks. I'm delighted. I, I generally didn't realise you'd gone over 200 episodes, which is sensational. So congratulations. Well, two, on 219, that. and um, this this could be 220, 21, 22. I've got, I've got up to 224 recorded. So they're all, I've just, I've just got to sit and edit now. Yeah, sit and edit, yeah. Well, as you say, keep it authentic. I've, I've not dropped any swearies, so you should be no, okay. No, I think I and did. Hopefully, no. And I'll be, it'll be really embarrassing if it hasn't worked with me trying this mic. My yeah, that's the, for anyone listening, that's the whole reason this this podcast came to be, because I recorded a show last night. Um, I think, oh, did I say this at the start? And Zoom just didn't record it. Uh, it's it's up there in the left-hand corner. I got the voiceover recording show or whatever it says. Luckily, I had it backed up on my, uh, my other thing, but... Here we are. Keith, Keith, as always, take it easy. Absolute joy, mate. You take care.